Hi everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to sit outside and give you something to look at besides my ugly mug. Um, my beautiful backyard. Most of these plants out here I got for nearly next to nothing or was given to me. And I just bless you and and thank him for the beauty that he was able to supply me for nearly next to nothing. Uh, today the video I want to do is the great deception. You hear many people talk about this, and <clears throat> they talk about aliens and all sorts of things. Uh, I don't think that's going to play into it. Let me bring something up here and read to you this. Now, and this is from the King James Version, 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye not be soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. That no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now remember, I spoke to you in the other videos about the fact that there's a difference between the, the beast and the son of perdition. Son indicates a human. Remember, one of the horns on... The beast in Daniel speaks. A human being speaks. So until this man first arises, he's going to be one of the ones who rules with the first three. He's going to be the head of them. The son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all things that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is as God, sitteth in the temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. Now, the thing about this <coughs> great Catholic monarch that people are waiting for, who's going to free Europe from the Muslims, even though he is a Muslim himself, at one time will be taken to the Mount of Olives and will be crowned as the Son of Man. Okay, it talks about that in these Catholic prophecies. Remember, ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Well, he's talking about this man. That is who is holding back everything. Okay, because the beast comes next. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. They're talking about this first guy here, the son of perdition. Okay, not the Holy Spirit. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay, that's talking about the beast that rises. Now, in the Islamic text, it talks about that the mark of the beast, or the mark, this, this beast that rises and marks people, doesn't happen until after he kills the guy who frees Europe and goes after Christians or believers in Yah who don't agree with the Catholic faith that they're going to reestablish from Turkey. Even him whose comings after the work of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, that's going to be him, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. 
And for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, right there tells you they are talking about the man of perdition, they're talking about the beast. It's not the Holy Spirit that's holding Satan from stepping onto this earth back. It is this guy right here who has to do the rule of the first three and one half years that are spoken about in Daniel. Okay? And then this other guy kills him and takes his place. And then goes into Jerusalem and starts wiping out people. This is where you get the 144,000 that are marked upon their forehead. Because this guy is going to come out of Mecca and Medina. Mecca or Medina. Um, the Islamic texts talk about it being Medina. That a beast shall rise up next to Medina. Okay. Now, and it says, And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause shall God shall send upon them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That is the great deception right there. They should believe a lie. This is the same deception that was practiced against Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve knew the truth. But they chose to believe a lie. Why? Because they were told that they would become like God, knowing right from wrong. Now this happens, folks, after the Holy Spirit is poured out upon all mankind. And I will take you and read you that real quick here. Just a moment. Typing away here. I'm out back, so it's taking a little bit longer for my computer to search out the signal. Just a second. Hmm. Well, Bible Hub saying it doesn't exist, but let's go to another one. Acts 2, 17, uh, Acts 2, verse 17, I don't know what kind it's going to pop up here with, let me get to the King James Version, <coughs> okay, let's just go ahead and read the whole thing. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all in one accord and in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And... There were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. 
Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came under, came together and were confounded because every man that heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in his own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappad Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phagiria, Pamphylia in Egypt and other parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, seeing one another. What meaneth this? Others mock, he said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. All flesh. That means every buddy. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days my spirits and they shall prophesy. Now prophesy, a friend told me about this. This prophesy is with an S which means and they will teach. So handmaidens, women will be teaching. Prophecy in this area does not mean future events. Prophecy, the way it is spelled here, means teaching. A friend of mine pointed that out to me, which I found very interesting, because I never believed in women teaching. But after reading this and him showing this to me, now I do. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood, fire, and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. Now, when you read extra biblical text, the one of the two leaders that are going to be ruling the three and a half years is going to take credit for turning the sun dark and the moon blood. Either he's taking credit for it or he's causing it one of the two by powers. Because... In the first verse, it says, there's signs in the earth, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. So I'm not for sure if it's the Lord doing this, Yah doing this, and this guy's going to claim credit for it, or if it is this man doing it because he's trying to extinguish life on earth. This beast that rises, because this is what the second beast does. It even speaks about this in other beliefs. Now shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? So, when, I gotta move my leg, it's getting cramped. When the Lord talks about everybody being deceived because they believed a lie. I, I told you in the other videos that the great falling, this is when the great falling away of the church happens. Because people are going to believe that this man is the son of God, return to earth. The first one that comes with the other three, the red pope and the dead man. Uh, listen to my other video about that, um, what will happen in the end of days. It's not a very good video, but... It's the first time I ever did a video, so sorry about the fact that it sucks so bad. This happens after everybody knows the truth. They choose to believe a lie. After the Holy Spirit comes upon all mankind, they will know who God is. They will know who, who Yah is, who Yeshua was. They will know everything. 
and they will still choose to believe a lie. So God causes them to have, Yah causes them to have great delusions. What those delusions are, I'm not sure. I think it has to do with uh, people running around acting like animals. Uh, that talks about this and several other um, uh, beliefs also. Um, or they will actually think that these two are actually God. Now, what I think is happening when you get a ruler... The first three that rule the first three and a half years and then goes to a single person, like it says about the horns in Daniel, three replaced by one. I think what you're looking at is a spiritual transference. Uh, Satan entering the body of a man and then Satan coming upon earth himself. So, because in Zechariah it states in the prophecy of the four shepherds that none of these people are of God. None of them. So, folks, that's what the great deception is, is is us deceiving ourselves. This is what causes a great falling away from the church. Is because of the war, and it talks about this in the prophecy, in the Apocrypha of Elijah, and some of it in the Apocrypha of Isaiah, talks about how people will be so tired of war that they will choose to believe a lie that this man is Yah on earth. So, that's it for my video. Please read. Don't trust my words. Go look for yourself. Always take it to the Holy Spirit in prayer. For it is the Holy Spirit who is our teacher and our guide who will lead us into righteousness. It is Him that teaches us. It's Him that has taught me these things. And I'm trying to relay them on to you. But I, I don't care if your minister comes up and tells you something. You go back to that Bible and check. Like the Jews did when the apostles went and was talking to Him. The Jews went back to scriptures and read the scriptures and said, Well, because of what you said is in the scriptures, we now believe you. So, always check. Have a wonderful day. Keep your faith. Because Europe will blow one of these days. It's going to get nasty. And eventually I'll do a video about the empires that are mentioned in the Statue of Daniel. And I'll have to do that as soon as I get a... Um, a dry erase board that I can outline stuff on, so this way I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you. Yabara. Bye.